Thanks for bearing with us. Um, so my name is Greg. I lead uh, our immersive computing partnerships uh, in Europe. Uh, for us, that mainly means AR uh, and Lens. Um, just a quick show of hands, how many of you guys uh, use Lens, let's say, have used Lens at all? OK, great. OK, not too bad. Um, so I will talk about the, the philosophy that we have when it comes to immersive computing how we think about computer vision, the future of search, AR, and things like that. And also provide a few sort of more technical details and some of the features that may be of interest to the developer community. So we, to anchor the discussion, we always try to think through this kind of arc of computing interfaces. So touch screens was one huge breakthrough around 10 years ago, multi-touch. Um, voice kind of made our smartphones our personal assistants. And the next evolution of that, we think, is going to be vision, right? Um, and fun fact, you know, uh, there's one billion productivity fo photos taken every day. Um, and that's actually 11% of all photos. So clearly, we're using our cameras for more than taking snapshots. And it's pretty clear, and I think we're all on the same page when we say that, you know, when we talk about smartphones, smartphone cameras, they're not really cameras anymore, just the same way as smartphones are not really phones anymore. However, you don't have to go very back in time, very sort of a long way back in time to figure out that for quite a while, up until recently, we've only been using our smartphone cameras for taking snapshots. And I think it's this kind of collective realization that we've had as a community that actually, hang on a second, these cameras are paired with tiny sort of small supercomputers that we all carry with us that also are packed with sensors, right? And then following on from that, we're starting to think, well, what if the most powerful sensor, the richest sensor of all of these sensors is actually the camera? And can we use that camera as the ultimate sort of input sensor to uh, sort of to drive our everyday interactions. And what that practically means is, for Lens and our efforts in that space, what if you could search what you see? And further from that, we will at some point end up in this kind of environment. And I'm sure there's you know lots of talks being um, had here today around this kind of air cloud future and what that actually means and how do we get there. So. From our point of view, a couple of things need to happen to achieve this super persistent, super perceptive, super interactive future. On the lens side, we're starting to index the physical world. And that's quite a tricky thing, right? So on the voice side, if you think about voice, there's, uh, anyone know how many words there are roughly in the English language? Any guesses? Yeah, 170,000. And how many do we use every day on average? It's like 3,000 3, I think we use day to day. So it's really hard. The voice problem in terms of input is really difficult. With uh, physical objects, it's, it's exponentially more difficult. So there's upwards of billion things in the world. And once you factor in things like you know, pose and lighting, it becomes really complicated. But this is something that we're working on. And Obviously, our investments in machine learning and computer vision have made that um, easier, let's say. And yes, computer vision, really important part of that. We need to use computer vision to apply, actually, sort of to bring semantic understanding of the scene so that the computer actually knows what it's looking at in a, in a pretty uh, detailed context. And then AR is that interaction layer that will make these experiences even more immersive. So perception and immersion, those are the two building blocks that we use, that we are investing in when we think about this kind of immersive future. And so with that, I'm going to talk about Lens and Air Core. Lens is the perception piece for us, and Air Core is the immersion. That's kind of the high level way to think about this. Lens is around two years old right now. We've launched not so long ago. Uh, we've been really focused on finding the use cases that 
are delightful and useful to users. Um, and it's been a really interesting process, I would say. Lens, by definition, as we've said before, is a very horizontal platform. So we're saying search what you see and also we enable you to interact with that context, with that content in the environment that you're in. And so to find those use cases from the get-go has been really interesting. So Lens Dining is one such feature that we've launched at I.O. where you're actually able to lens a menu uh, in real time at a restaurant and get suggestions on the most popular dishes on the menu. And this data is pulled from, from Google Maps. So quite a useful but also delightful experience that takes the friction of everyday um, sort of things that you might already be doing. It just adds one layer of interaction and delight. Translate is another thing. So actually done inline. Um, if you ever used it, it's pretty amazing. Um, like, you know, if you're in Germany, you don't speak German, you can pull out Lens and figure out what the menu says. So it's really useful. Um, and Lens shopping is another thing where we figured that actually that paradigm of search, when you know exactly what you're searching for, that's fine, right? So many times there are particular objects, particular patterns, particular color schemes that is just so hard to describe in words. By pointing your camera at a particular outfit, you can either figure out what that outfit actually is or find similar outfits that look like it. So these are our kind of early steps to try to figure out what are the kinds of experiences that can leverage the camera that are truly useful and delightful in everyday life. And on the AR side, obviously, we're looking at vastly richer experiences, using the camera as an input, but also providing much richer output, right? So multi-user gaming, I'm going to talk a bit more about that. AR working nav, um, folks are using working nav here, show of hands. Nice. Yeah, so I, you know, those kinds of experiences that are, again, you know, we always talk about the toothbrush test at Google, something that can be used twice a day, ideally. Um, those are the experiences that we're looking after right now. We're looking to really provide value um, in everyday life. To go back to Lens, um, we are in kind of early access program stage right now, working with select partners on the Lens platform. So some of the things that I talked about before, like Lens Translate and Air Menus, are what we call our first party experiences. We're also slowly opening up Lens to third party partners who are able to create their own experiences um, leveraging Lens and, and the camera. So the example here on the left is um, a partnership we did with, the, uh, with Stranger Things. It's actually an ad taken out in the New York Times where by when you Lens the ad, you get pulled into this immersive experience. It's exclusive content that was provided especially for, for, this, um, for this partnership. And then further on the right is a kind of a retail-based uh, execution with JD Sport. Uh, a really interesting way to think about entry points for content creators, for retailers. How do you link an offline experience entry point into something that you can actually then um, uh, sort of drive the user into an online experience and provide that offline to online attribution. And that can be used for anything for in-store, to drive people in-store, to delight users in-store, but also in a more practical way to upsell um, and to perhaps talk about some of the exclusive um, you know, shoe drops that you might have. Uh, YouTube is another really important surface for us. There we've worked with a bunch of fashion brands to uh, leverage the front-facing camera to actually um, sort of do things like beauty try-ons. Again, a really important space and a lot of other companies are working in that space, but we feel like with YouTube, we have a really important surface that has lots of users and we're able to leverage the front-facing camera to actually um, provide that really interesting, like frictionless experience where you can try on uh, different makeups straight from, straight from uh, YouTube in the front-facing camera. Search, we talked about search. Um, search AR is a way to essentially be able to um, find and unearth 3D assets straight from within search. We're looking at select few verticals right now, like uh, human anatomy and animals. Um, if you try it right now on any device that you have, if you type in uh, pretty much any animal, you'll see a 3D asset that you can place in front of you. 
Um, and talking about 5G, for example, 5G is a big topic for everyone in the industry. We think that's going to be really uh, important in that context as well, as right now these assets are around 10 megabytes in size. You know, you can think through really rich, high fidelity assets up to 100 megabytes that you can interact with uh, right in front of you. And again, this sort of uh, links together how we think about search, how we think about visual search, and how we think about placing 3D objects, uh, taking them from a relatively uh, sort of simple experience of search and making them interactive right in front of you. The context of um, a lens is super important as well. So if you think about the, all the different types of experiences that we're able to guide users to everything from editorial and providing exclusive content, behind the scenes content, like you see there on the left, um, to commerce. So you know, you're able to lens uh, a piece of vinyl and actually figure out like, you know, what is that uh, record exactly and how much does it cost and where can I buy it. So unique uh, entry points that would be either really difficult without the camera and the input or much more difficult. Uh, how to's are another avenue that we're exploring. You know, imagine you get a fancy coffee machine, you don't quite know how to use it. Um, you can lens it and get a tutorial, and I'll show a bit more about what that looks like. Um, high density environments, so like being at a gallery and actually being able to walk around and point your camera at different uh, pieces of art and get more contextual information around that art. Uh, we've done a few of these executions in, uh, in the US and they work really well. Just want to talk a little bit about the, the middle one in particular. We've done this um, partnership with OnePlus just last week for the 7T launch. Um, this particular partnership was around actually leveraging the, one, the sort of the momentum of the OnePlus launch, partnering with National Geographic. So all of these photos were shot on 7T cameras. We set up a physical space in London, a gallery, a pop-up gallery that lasted for one day. And every uh, user within the gallery was able to actually learn more about the particular photo and how it was shot by pointing the camera at the photo and have this um, sort of behind-the-scenes clip autoplay. A really interesting kind of a delightful experience that tells the user much more about that uh, particular photo. And then going back to the example of, you know, the how-to um, is, again, a really interesting use case. I think we're just at the beginning. And how do you actually create, uh, how do you make AR truly useful uh, away from the gimmicky and towards the useful? I think we're all uh, at this stage where we really want to focus on these kind of useful experiences. If you think about the number of apps in the App Store right now, um, a lot of them are utility apps. So Measure, I think, is one of the top um, downloaded apps both in Play Store and App Store. And I think moving away from the, the really simple kind of utility use cases to much more advanced utility use cases, we're going to see much more of that. So diving into AirCore a little bit more. We're on 400 million devices that are certified for AirCore, so we're reaching, we're trying to reach that Android scale and really using kind of Android as a, as a vehicle to reach as many users as possible. Thousands of apps, it's true, a lot of them are um, you know, utility-based. There's a lot of gaming use cases. Um, we are thinking through, again, like what is the next level of the richer inputs that we can create that will provide much more interesting and richer outputs? So right now, uh, motion tracking, basic environmental understanding, also really important, but quite basic light estimation really important. Cloud Anchors is one um, thing that we've launched very recently, and um, I'll talk more about that. So all of these things will lead to richer outputs, and so we really think of, if you think of the camera as the input, we're starting to see how the camera also becomes the output itself. Like You can actually overlay information and uh, various kind of aspects that are generated through the camera right within that view, so like you see on the left. Augmented images uh, is a feature we've launched recently. This is quite incredible. So it basically enables you to overlay uh, any 2D image, 
and bring it to life with a within a kind of with a three D output. Um, so again, we've, from the previous version, thirty percent better tracking precision and uh, detection recall, and amazing tracking as well. Augmented faces again. Not a new thing for the industry in general, but we're pretty proud with what we've done here. So it's a 468.3D face mesh, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty accurate. This is the tech that we're using for our AR beauty try-ons with, with YouTube. So cloud anchors, right? So I think many talks here today, tomorrow, air cloud, super important. Um, so one step for us is uh, cloud anchors. We think of this as the save button for, for AR. So you're actually able to um, leave virtual objects in space and then come back to them. It's multiplayer. We haven't yet found a sort of a limit to how many uh, concurrent users you can have uh, across iOS and, and Android. Um, and yeah, the anchors last for, for 24 hours at the moment. So. To wrap it up, I think this is, again, to go back to where we started. I want to talk about the investments that we're making in perception with lens and computer vision and how that you know, hopefully is driving us to a more useful and delightful experience day to day than Air Core. Uh, some of the investments that we're making there to bring it all back together into this you know, hypothetical future that will most likely be driven by other form factors than smartphones. Smartphones are the investments we're making right now. However, these are the building blocks, these are the stepping stones to something that is going to be probably around smart glasses, right? So that's the vision, um, and that's my talk. So I think we have time for questions, probably. <laughs>